In the history of ancient Israel, we read of Almighty God's desire to be with his people. From the opening pages of Genesis, where God is present to Adam and Eve in the garden, to the heights of Sinai, where he reveals himself to Moses, God desires to be with his people. The most important of these events, however, from the Christian perspective, is the Ark. The Ark of the Covenant. As Almighty God guides his chosen people through the desert, he remains with them, and his presence overshadows the Ark. I will be your God, he tells them, and you will be my people. I will go before you when you enter the Promised Land. I will be there at the front of your battles. I will be there in the centre of your worship. I will be your God. You will be my people. The Ark was designed by God. He gave very clear, very definite instructions for the construction of his dwelling place. It will be made of acacia wood. A, kind, a wood that they understood then to essentially be incorruptible, it didn't decay. And then it would be gilt with gold, covered with pure gold. And it would be carried, not just by anybody, but by priests, consecrated to God's service. And then it would be carried on poles. They wouldn't touch it directly. The ark was God's incorruptible dwelling place. The Israelites were to take it into battle at the forefront of the army. And through the presence of the ark, they were meant to be victorious. That was our first reading today. The destruction of the walls of the wicked city of Jericho. The city that symbolized sin. Geographically, the lowest city on earth. Through the sevenfold procession with the ark around the city, the walls fall, the walls of sin, the empire of sin falls, and the people of God are victorious. God's plan for the Jews was very simple. If they wanted victory, they had to let the ark lead. That was the only directive, the only order, and if faithfully carried, and if they faithfully carried the ark with clean hands and pure hearts. If they followed these orders, they would be victorious. My friends, fellow legionaries, the ark was a type of Our Lady. We know that, don't we? The ark was a type of Our Lady, a symbol, a prophetic foreshadowing of her. The visit of Our Lady to Elizabeth is the procession of the living Ark of the Covenant, the new Ark, the perfect Ark that contains within her God made man, Jesus Christ. Our Lady, morally spotless and without sin, just as the first Ark was gilt with gold and so carefully created in the finest of incorruptible materials. Our Lady, the spiritual vessel, the vessel of honour, the singular vessel of devotion. Our Lord works his first miracle through her, the sanctification of Saint John the Baptist, freeing him from the stain of original sin. He still uses her as his mediatrix to this day, being magnified through her, pouring out all his graces through her. St. John, in his Apocalypse, sees perhaps the first Marian apparition. He sees the Ark of the Covenant entering into heaven. And then a verse later, it says he sees the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. The two images are an overlap. The woman is the Ark. The Ark is the symbol of Our Lady. Our Lady is the Ark. She remains the Ark. And the Ark has to lead. The Ark has to lead the new people of God, the Catholic Church, just as the Ark of the Covenant 
was at the front of the army of ancient Israel. The plan hasn't changed. The orders haven't changed. The ark has to lead. The dear servant of God, Frank Duff, the greatest Irish man of the 20th century, the saintly and inspired founder of our Holy Legion, he realised this. He realised that if the church is going to triumph, if sin is to be conquered, if vice is going to be eradicate, if Jericho's are to fall, the ark has to lead. Our Lady is not an optional extra. Our Lady is the means. She remains the means. She will always be the means through which Jesus Christ wishes to come to us. Almighty God could have done it other ways, but he chose this one. Just as he could have been present directly to his people in the desert, but he didn't choose that. He chose to dwell over the ark, and he still uses an ark. Our Lady, the ark of the new covenant. Now I'm getting to my main point now, so sit up. I sometimes wonder, my friends, what is going on with our church these days? The world is in a mess. We all know that. Impurities, infidelities, false religions, errors, lies, depression, despair, hopelessness, and now war. And the church, the bishops, the priests, the laity, what is our response? We are producing all these strategies and plans and synods, so much time and energy, so many documents, so many exhortations. I just want to say, enough, enough. Because you know what? Heaven has provided a way. Heaven has dictated the strategy. Heaven has given one simple directive. Let the ark lead. Let the ark lead. Now some people might think that just saying that is like a, a slogan. A slogan that's catchy but doesn't have practical solutions. But here's we, where we come back to Frank Duff and the Legion of Mary. The Legion started off when Frank Duff and a group of women gathered together one September evening and said, Mother, lead us. From the principle of let the ark lead, we have the entire Legion system. And the growth and success and conversions from the Legion of Mary have come, come precisely because the Legion has followed the ark. Just like we see on our tessera, Mary leading us in the battle. The Legion is a living sign of what it looks like to let the ark lead. The Legion lives as a continual prophetic proclamation to the rest of the church, to the Pope, to the bishops, to the priests, to the laity. This is what it looks like when you let the ark lead. You want a strategy to keep young people firm in the Catholic faith. Open junior presidia, start junior patricians, form young people to evangelize other young people, get them leading the rosy groups in school, give them high ideals. This is a legion's answer to the lapsation of the youth, the youth. Let the ark lead. You want a strategy for your parish to grow in holiness, Encourage every adult member of your parish to pray the Legion prayers every day. To have her statue in their home. To undertake the true devotion to Mary. The easiest and surest way to holiness. That is the Legion's answer to, to lukewarmness. Let the ark lead. You want a strategy for the conversion of all people to the Catholic faith. Atheists, Muslims, Jews, Protestants, Hindus, all of them to the one true faith and to bring the lapse back to the sacraments. You get as many adult procedure going as you can. Doing home to home, crowd contact, submitting to the weekly discipline of the Legion and growing in personal holiness. 
That is the Legion's answer to evangelization. Not just talking about evangelization, but doing it. Letting the ark lead. You want a strategy to reach out to the lonely, the marginalized, the poor, the sick, those on the fringes of society. Again, the Presidium offers, offers an answer. Doing week by week visits among the homeless, in the care homes, running book barrows, offering the motherly love of Our Lady, which can bring consolation in the most desperate situations. That's the Legion's answer. Let the ark lead. For a hundred years, the Legion of Mary has been living out within the church the true face of the Catholic Church. What the Catholic Church is really like. What it means to let the ark lead. And I've seen great victories. And if, if you've been in a faithful presidium or a faithful curia, you know what I'm talking about. In my own life, I can think of an elderly woman, 80 years old, who was a Protestant, but who became a Catholic because legionaries knocked on our door one day. And then I think of a, a prostitute who abandoned her life of depravity because legionaries patiently met with her month after month on a dingy street corner. And then I think of entire countries like, like South Korea, where the Catholic faith would just be a really tiny percentage of the population if it hadn't been for legionaries, letting the ark lead, following Our Lady's example, bringing the true Catholic faith to their neighbors. And the church in Korea keeps growing. And why? Because when I last checked, one in 10 practicing Catholics is a member of the Legion of Mary. One in 10. That is letting the ark lead. My dear legionaries, for a hundred years, Almighty God has richly blessed our holy legion. And today, we offer a great act of thanksgiving. But let me repeat, it is only in proportion that we follow his plan, Almighty God's plan, that we let the ark lead, that any future successes or victories or conversions will come. We hold the pearl of great price. We hold the answer and the solution to all the present day problems in the world and in the church. The answer is simple. Let the ark lead. When you start with that principle, as Frank Duff did, when you take it seriously, it doesn't mean just saying a few rosaries. It means I'm all yours, my queen and my mother, and all that I have is yours. It means a system. It means a week-in, week-out commitment. It means every activity in church and parish life completely renewed and revived by the powerful influence of Mary. Nowadays, as I said, there are so many efforts to make the church more missionary or evangelical or full of intentional disciples or whatever the latest catchphrase might be. These plans, they're not evil. The people come up with them are genuine. But God doesn't change. His plan remains the same. It's simple, but it's mighty powerful. Let the ark lead. That's the only way our church will get out of the mess it finds herself in. And the only way the evils of the world will in any way be overcome. So finally, and now I'm coming to my last point. Legionaries, we need to be models of what it means to let the ark lead in our personal lives in our commitment to the true devotion to Mary, and in our generosity and heroism to the weekly works of the Legion of Mary. We need to inspire others through our total submission to Mary, to following the ark, and we need to recruit. Every week we need to ask parishioners to join us, and we need to be doing the challenging works of the Legion to make people want to join us. Anything else is simply not the legion. And it's not really letting the ark lead at all. It's letting fear lead. We need to recruit. COVID gave a, gave a blow to our numbers. There's no doubt about it. And many of our bravest and most dedicated soldiers have now gone to their eternal reward. May God rest their souls. Now is our time to get back to the core of the legion system. 
The key message, let the ark lead. If you're not a member of the Legion of Mary, an active member, I have to ask you, are you letting the ark lead you through your life? Or are you letting something else? Pray about it. We have to be the sign to the entire church of what it means, of what happens when we let Mary lead us in our lives. And there are great victories and graces and conversions when Mary comes first, when we let the ark lead. Frank Guff, a hundred years ago, heard this call, this summons, and as a result of it, he founded our Holy Legion, and that's why we're here today. I pray that each one of us spends the remainder of his or her life responding to this call and living it. I am all yours, my Queen and my Mother, and all that I have is yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.